guys how are you thank you for joining me today again for Selenia I really miss you and I wish we were together at church today but since we can't I'm glad that you're here with me so let's get started and we're going to start, start with a prayer as always so I would like to invite you to close your eyes and say after me dear Heavenly Father we are grateful for another week and for another day we thank you jesus for our family and friends we thank you for our church and we pray that very soon we can all be together today we would like to pray for you to open our hearts so we can receive the word of Jesus. Please God, speak to us, teach us your word today. Keep us safe, keep our family safe, our friends, and all of our community. We thank you Jesus for your love and for protecting us from all harm. In your mighty name we pray, Amen. We're going to learn a new song today. I don't think any of you know this song. And it's a song that I really wanted for us to sing together at church because it talks about us holding our hands together, shaking our hands and hugging each other, I think. But, uh, but since we can't, I would like you to shake your um, mom's or your siblings or your dad's hand today while we sing it. Okay, so I'm gonna sing it and then we can see what we're gonna do. Is that okay? So this is the song, it's in Portuguese. Quão bom e quão maravilhoso é que os irmãos vivam em união. Quão bom e quão maravilhoso é que os irmãos vivam em união. Aperte a mão do seu irmão e dê um sorriso pra ele Aperte a mão do seu irmão E cante essa canção Now, so this was like a training So did you see where you have to shake someone's hand? So we would have done that at church So the song talks about how good it is For brothers and sisters in Christ To live in communion To live together in a community and it tells us to shake our, our brothers or sisters hand and to give them a big smile. So I'm gonna sing it one more time. And when it's on that part of the song, I want you to shake someone's hand and give them a big smile. So let's go one more time. Quão bom e quão maravilhoso é que os irmãos vivam em união. Quão bom e quão maravilhoso é Que os irmãos vivam em união. Aperte a mão do seu irmão e dê um sorriso pra ele. Aperte a mão do seu irmão e cante essa canção. Quão bom e quão maravilhoso é que os irmãos vivam em união. Quão bom e quão maravilhoso é. Que os irmãos vivam em união. Aperte a mão do seu irmão e dê um sorriso pra ele. Aperte a mão do seu irmão e cante essa canção. That was a lovely song. So, you probably don't know the song yet, but we will keep singing it until you learn it off by heart. I think it's just a fun song where we get to smile to each other and hold each other's hand. Even though we can't really touch people right now because of the virus, you can certainly shake your mom's and your dad's or your siblings' hands, right? And the next song, you know this one off by heart, okay? So it is Som Saudadinho, Som Milita, 
de fado bonazinho, já sei marchar, soldado não descansa, dormi no chão, na hora da partida ele faz pim, bom, bororão, bom, bom, não usamos espingardas, nem espadas, nem canhão, nossa força é a verdade, o nosso lema é a salvação. Bom, 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 bom. Wow, that was so much fun. I know you like this one. So let's go to the next one. The very last song is... Meu barco é pequeno e grande é o mar. Jesus segura minha mão. Ele é meu piloto e tudo vai bem na viagem para Jerusalém. Meu barco sem Cristo ao céu não irá, nas águas afundará. Mas quando Jesus o meu barco guia, ao céu poderei alcançar. Ao céu poderei alcançar Na viagem pra Jerusalém Amém! Uhul! Yeah! That was so much fun. I've said that so many times now, haven't I? So let's do our Bible verse now. Have it in Portuguese here, because this is a very old one that I made many years ago, but I also have it in English. So are you ready? It's very short. So I want you to say it with all your strength. Say, ame o seu próximo como a si mesmo. Mateus 22, 39. One more time. Ame o seu próximo como a si mesmo. Mateus 22, 39. Let's do it in English. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, verse 39. One more time. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22 verse 39. Well done. So I wonder, do you know who said this? You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It was Jesus who said these words. And you might ask yourself, or you may even wonder, oh well, who's my neighbor? Is my neighbor the person that lives in front of you, beside me? That lives next door to me. I have to love my neighbor as I love myself. Is that my neighbor? Well, your neighbor is anyone that is close to you or near you. So whoever is near you now, it doesn't matter where you are, you're in school, whoever is close to you, that's your neighbor. If you're in a park, whoever is close to you, that's your neighbor. If you're at church, whoever's close to you at church is your neighbor. So really anyone that is near you, doesn't matter if you know that person or if you don't, they are your neighbor. And the Bible says, Jesus says that I should love this person just like I love myself. And if you think about it, we do really love ourselves, don't we? Because we only want to eat the most delicious food, we only want to wear the nicest clothes, we want people to treat with us very well, we want people to love us, we don't want anyone to say bad things to us or to hurt us because we love us so much that we want to be just as we are. And Jesus says that the same way that we love us so much that we want everything for us we have to be the same with our neighbor. So if we want the best clothes for ourselves, we should want the same for our neighbor. If we want to have the most delicious food, we should wish the same and even share with our neighbors, whoever's close to us. Oh, I really want a piece of chocolate pie 
slice of chocolate pie and then there you are eating your pie and then your neighbor someone's close to you mm, i would like to have some of that too but i don't have a pie you should share because you should do the same thing to your neighbor as you wish someone did to you okay so let's read one more time you shall love your neighbor as yourself matthew 22 39 so remember next time that if you're close to someone that's your neighbor and you should love that person just as much as you love yourself okay so let's do our story time now and i would like for you to sit in a very comfortable position where you're all comfy and ready to listen okay be very quiet and pay lots of attention so i have a little question for you is do you know when did the first church came to be so you're in church and you're like how did all of this start so i have i go to my church and there's other churches around the world but when did the first church was created when did it existed like have you ever wondered or asked yourself that where did the church start when who was the pastor who were the people in the church and i will answer that question for you well i won't answer i won't answer who was the pastor because there was no pastors at the time but i will tell you about the very first church okay the very first church in this the church the first church is also known as early church okay so if you ever hear this word oh yes this was done in the early church oh yes that man was part of the early church it means that it was the first church ever and i want to go back to when jesus died so remember jesus was crucified he died he resurrected on the third day as we read and then he ascended to heaven and after he ascended to heaven before he ascended to heaven sorry he said that he would send the helper which is what we learned last week about the holy spirit that the <clears throat> our brothers and sisters in christ the disciples the followers of jesus they were waiting for the helper and the helper did come right and after that everything started so it was after the holy spirit came that the very first church was created and this is what we're going to learn today so when people ask you oh do you know when did the first church or the early church came to be you're going to say oh yeah it was after jesus ascended to heaven and then people were filled with the holy spirit after that the church became to be what it is today so it's it started okay so we're going to go back to well sort of what we learned last week which is amazing events had been taking place in the city of jerusalem for one thing there was a big holiday can you remember what the holidays the holiday was called it was called the pentecost thousands of jewish people from many regions and countries had come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. This was a time when the Jews came to thank God for the food and grain he had provided for them in the harvest. They also thanked God for the law and the Ten Commandments. So here we have all these people together in Jerusalem, okay? and they came over to jerusalem to celebrate the feast of pentecost where it was a celebration where they thanked god for for the harvest for everything god did and remember that our brothers and sisters were waiting for the for the holy spirit at this feast they were all gathered together the followers of christ they were gathered together at this feast waiting for the holy spirit and that's when the holy spirit came so we have all these people going to Jerusalem, arrive in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. Mm. 
Now, what that was in the most important event, so the feast of Pentecost, was not the most important event that took place in Jerusalem at that time. Everyone was talking about something new. Mm, we've learned about that last week, didn't we? Peter and the other apostles were telling everyone about Jesus and how he was the son of God. They preached about how Jesus had been killed on a cross but had come back alive. Jesus had gone back to heaven but before he went he told the apostles to tell everyone the good news about him. So here we have um, Peter and some of the other apostles preaching the word of God. Can you remember what happened before this? They were in a room praying the Holy Spirit came, gave them the um, tongues of fire. They were able to speak, speak in a way that everyone could understand what they were saying, even if they didn't speak the same language. And they went out of the room and started preaching the word of God. As you can see here, you can see them preaching. Oh, Jesus, yes, he, he, he's the son of God. He died, but on the third day he was resurrected and he ascended to heaven. He will come back again and he's going to save those who follow him. So here they are preaching the word of God to the people that were at the feast. Now, when people heard about Jesus, many of them said they wanted to follow him. They said they were sorry for all of their sins and they were baptized. More and more people decided to obey Jesus and become Christians. So here we have Peter preaching the word of God to these people. And these people were touched by the words they were saying and about the gospel of God. And they were like, yes, I'd like to follow Jesus. I want to be one of Jesus' followers and I want to be baptized. So here we have you. You've been to a baptism before at church many times. And these were one of the first baptism so after so many years here we have we have people being baptized in the church but also in the early church so here we have them being baptized just like we have in our church okay do you know what a person becomes a part of when they become christian do you know that he or she becomes part of the church okay and this is where the church begins because here we have people accepting Jesus into their hearts being baptized and becoming Christians so Christians are people that believes that Jesus is the son of God he died on the third day he resurrected ascended to heaven and one day he will return so someone like that and lives to follow Jesus in the Bible is a Christian, right? And a Christian becomes part of a church. So when we have three, four, five Christians together, that is a church. So the church we go to, it's not a church because it has chairs or it has musical instruments, but the reason it's called a church is because more than three or four people together there are Christians and that is what makes up of a church, okay? So being part of the church means that you follow the church leader, Jesus. So you're a Christian and a Christian must follow who? Jesus. Being part of the church also means you are part of a new family. So everyone in the church that are Christian and that are are together there like every week they are a family in Christ okay so we are all brothers and sisters in Christ the other people in the church are your brothers and sisters so here we have so here before we have them being baptized and becoming Christians here we have them all together praying together so this is the, uh, the church okay so church is not about the building or the place you are but it's all about the people you're with and what you're doing with these people. So here we have the church, people together 
worshiping, praying, adoring Jesus and preaching the word of God. Uh, all of the people in Jerusalem who became Christians were now part of the church. It was a very big church. On the first day there, there were almost 3,000 people in it. Can you guess how many people is that in our church? Maybe 30, 40? I, I don't even know myself. But on this particular church, the very first church in Jerusalem, there were 3,000 Christians in it. So it was a very big church. More and more people obeyed the teachings of Jesus and were added to the church every day. So first it started with Peter and some of the apostles preaching the word of God here, right? And they were preaching, preaching, and people then wanted to become Christians. And then these Christians started pre uh, preaching, so started saying about Jesus to other people and the, these other people want to become Christians as well and everyone started talking to each other about Jesus and his salvation and the kingdom of God and more and more people accepted Jesus into their hearts every day more people would join the church now what do you think a church should be like today today do you think you can be a good example and help your church be like the church in Jerusalem so what do you think this church should be like today should it be just the way it is should there be something different to it and what can you do to be a good example so our church today can be as good as the church in Jerusalem and why is that it's why, why was the church in Jerusalem so good? Because they preached the word of God to everyone. And every day, more and more people accepted Jesus. And they did other things as well that we're going to read now. So what did the church in Jerusalem did? The church listened to the apostles teach about Jesus. Before he went back to heaven, Jesus said this to the apostles, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So that is exactly what the apostles did. They taught people about Jesus every day because that's what people, that's what Jesus told them to do. Sometimes people needed proof to show that the teachings were really true. So the apostles would perform miracles to prove it. The church was filled with awe. In our time, Jesus' teachings are written in the Bible. How can you help your church read the Bible and listen to people teach about Jesus? So here we have more of the people um, that joined the church, became Christians and joined the church day after day, right? After hearing the preachings of the apostles. Now at this time, they didn't have the Bible. They did have the Old Testament, but they didn't have the New Testament, okay? And so they would listen to what the apostles said. So the, the followers, the people that followed Jesus before he went to heaven. So Jesus taught these apostles and now the apostles are teaching the church. They're like the pastors. And they are talking about Jesus every day. But now we have our Bible. And in our Bible, there's everything we need to know about Jesus. So how can you help your church? To teach about Jesus, what can you do so that your church every day is teaching about Jesus, talking about Jesus? Can you think of something? Well, that's your own answer. I'm not going to answer that for you. Now, the church had fellowship with one another. They met together in the temple courts and in their homes. They weren't even worried that they didn't have a big and beautiful church building. 
if a Christian brother or sister was hungry or needed clothes, then another Christian brother or sister would sell something and use the money to buy what was needed. They shared everything. So they lived in fellowship, so they lived together and they shared everything together. So if there was a poor a brother or sister that didn't have any food, the brother and sister that did have some money, they would sell something that they had so they could get the food for this brother and sister that did have no food. So everyone had everything they needed because they shared everything together. So this is what being part of a church is. So they lived together, they had dinners together, they had um, services together, they shared everything. Now, and what can you do when someone ne uh, needs help in your church? So we have to help each other because we're family in Christ. Now we are part of a church because we are Christians and we have to help each other. So if there's someone in your church that needs help, can you think of something that you can do to them? Like these brothers and sisters did to one another. That will make the, the church, the very first church, so important. It was because they took care of each other. The church shared meals and shared the Lord's Supper together. The church often ate food together. When the first day of the week came around, the church drank grape juice or wine and ate unleavened bread together to, re re um, to remember Jesus in the Lord's Supper. They wanted to remember again and again all of the good things that Jesus had done. So again, this was the first church, remember the early church? And so they started uh, having food together, just like we have sometimes. And they also had the Holy Supper, just like we have in our own church, the Holy Supper, where we drink the grape juice, some places have wine and some bread, and then we remember the sacrifice of Jesus in this ceremony that we have. So here we have them all together, having some food together, praising God together, which is very important. So this was something that the very first church did, and we're still doing after so many years. Now, the church prayed together. God listens when we talk to him. The church in Jerusalem talked to God. Maybe they asked God to help them to be good. Maybe they prayed for the Christians' brothers and sisters that were sick. Maybe they prayed that more and more people would follow Jesus. Jesus has loved the church since the very beginning. The people in the first church prayed, and the people in the church today can pray. Do you talk to God? What can you pray about for your church? Hmm? So here we have our brothers and sisters in Christ praying. See them? So we've learned today that how the first church came to be. We learned that after uh, the, the Holy Spirit came into the, into the room that our brothers and sisters were praying, they were filled with courage and with tongues of fire where they could talk in a way that everyone could understand them. They went outside where there were so many people that came over for the Feast of Pentecost and they started preaching the word of God about Jesus to these people. And these people accepted Jesus into their heart. And what did they do? They accepted Jesus, they were baptized, and they became part of a church because there were many Christians together. Remember how many of them? More than 3,000 every day, more of them added were added to the church. And what did they do? They shared everything with each other. So if one brother and sister needed something, they would whoever had it gave it to, to them. They shared meals together. They shared the holy uh, supper together. So they were together and they also prayed together, just like we do in our church. So now you know how our church came to be, how the very church was created and how things evolved up to now. And our activity for today is this page here that says, 
Those in the early church did continue daily with one accord in the temple, broke bread from house to house, ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praised God and had favored with all the people. So here we have our brothers and sisters in Christ in the very early church, eating together, praying together, being together, worshiping together. And I would like for you to color very nicely. Now, don't go rushing, okay? Take your time, you have plenty of time. Do very slowly and very nicely that when we come back to church, I wanna have a look at these and I hope that they're so beautiful. Now remember, you have your copy with you, your activity copy, your activity book actually, but only color this, do not do any more work, okay? Now, let's pray and thank God for our church and um, pray that we can very soon go back to being together. This is so special. Like, we want to be just like this church in Jerusalem again. We want to be able to help each other. We want to be able to have the Holy Supper together. We want to be able to pray together again. Amen? So let's bow our heads and pray together. We thank you, Jesus, for everything we learned today. What a special thing we learned about the early church and how the church came to be. It was so special. And we thank you, Jesus, that we are now part of this big, big church that started so many years ago in Jerusalem. Father, our prayer today is that very soon we can go back to our own church, to our own place of worship, and that we can be all together, praying, helping each other, sharing meals with each other. Jesus, we're so grateful to be part of a church. It is such a special thing to be part of. We thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we pray that you keep them safe and that very soon we can all worship the Lord together in one place as part of a church. In your name we pray, amen. And before we finish, I would like to sing that song one more time, okay, that we learned today. Quão bom e quão maravilhoso é que os irmãos vivam em união. Quão bom e quão maravilhoso é que os irmãos vivam em união. Aperte a mão do seu irmão e dê um sorriso pra ele. Aperte a mão do seu irmão e cante essa canção. Quão bom e quão maravilhoso é que os irmãos vivam em união. Quão bom e quão maravilhoso é que os irmãos vivam em união. Aperte a mão do seu irmão e dê um sorriso pra ele. Aperte a mão do seu irmão e cante essa canção. Alright guys, I'll see you next week. Bye!